Blessed be God, creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you and also with you let us pray almighty and everlasting god whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved son the king of kings and lord of lords mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth divided and enslaved by sin may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, church. The, Good first, morning. the first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34 verses 11 through 16 and 20 through 24. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord Jesus, thus says the Lord God, I, may, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries. I will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the loss, and I will bring back the strain, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. 
because you pushed with flying and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravished and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. And I, the Lord, have spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 95. We will read it by the whole verse. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before the Lord with thanksgiving. And raise love shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King among all gods. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. The second reading is from Ephesians 1. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember. I'm sorry. I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us, who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
the Holy Gospel of the Holy Gospel of according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the least, one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. In the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, amen. amen. So I want to begin not with the actual sermon, but to t say two things. If you noticed, our crucifer and both acolytes are masked, and it's not because they have COVID. It's because both, they all have colds, and they're trying not to spread the cold, which is in a very efficient use of masks now that we've gotten used to wearing them. Um, so I did want to say that. Um, and, and, whoops, <laughs> listen, I've done that before, so we all know. <laughs> so this morning, which is the, the last Sunday after Pentecost, but it is also the feast of Christ the King. But the second thing we are doing this year 
is as actually Kathy Yamaoka and I were speaking about St. Andrew, who is um, our patronal. Uh, he's, you know, we're named after St. Andrew, St. Andrew and Holy Communion. And for some reason, not in Kathy's memory anyway, and she's been around a while here at this church, no, she can't remember anyone ever celebrating St. Andrew's Day. And so we decided this year of the Saints Alive program, as we're trying to get educated on more saints, that we should celebrate St. Andrew. And here was the little conundrum. Both St. Andrew, feast day, which is November 30th, is the same feast day as Barbados Independence. They, we decided, I actually had a long talk with Val about this, and we decided not to merge them together, um, but that we would hold them on separate days, and so that's why we're celebrating Next week, which is December 3rd, we're celebrating Barbados Independence, and today we're celebrating St. Andrew. And of course, on the, the church calendar at this time of year, right around Thanksgiving, we either have the Feast of Christ the King, which is today, or we have the first Sunday of Advent, and it just depends. And so here we are, I was faced with trying to talk about Christ the King and St. Andrew. Um, and I am going to attempt to do this, and we'll see how well that comes off. I'm going to begin with sheep and goats. Because you just heard about sheep and goats, and if you remember back to Ezekiel, in Ezekiel it talks about separating sheep from one another. And this, uh, in the gospel, is the sheep and the goats. Now, like with many other times that we have to speak about what Jesus was saying during his life, sometimes we don't know enough about what was going on at that time. And this is something I actually not only just learned this year, but I will tell you in this sermon prayer group I have on Friday mornings, I just learned about it two days ago. And Really, only one or two people there actually knew it. Somebody looked it up while we were um, talking. So here is an interesting fact. Now, I suspect every single one of you, if I brought in a sheep and I brought in a goat into this room, you would know the difference, right? They are very different looking. Sheep have big woolly coats. Goats jump around all over the place and have little nubs of, um, and sometimes larger horns. However, just like with many other animals over the, the tens of thousands of years that we have lived with and alongside or cultivated them, sheep look very differently. 2,000 years ago than they did now. In fact, if they were in one herd, it would be very difficult to know the difference just by looking at them. Now, the differences and how people then could distinguish in them Goats still had that same per wonderful cat-like personality of jumping around and thinking that they're in charge of everything around. If you've ever had cats, you know that. And if you've ever been around goats, they, they're sweet, at least babies are. Um, what they specifically are like when they're out in the wild, they're herd creatures, which means they wander in every direction direction and they don't have a hierarchy. They just are fairly independent and they, they're playful, eat anything. Um, now sheep are flock animals. They band together and they definitely have leaders. They're also easily scared, easily led. And, um, and so the way they would tell them in the hop in the flock of all of them together, the, the shepherd 
is by the playfulness and the jumping around of the goat that would go out here and out here. And sheep almost never do that. Um, so <clears throat> when Jesus was talking about sheeps and the goat, he were not, was not thinking about two different groups of animals. He was thinking of one flock. One flock, just like we humans. And the one thing I want to say that we humans, to carry this metaphor a little bit further than it was intended to be carried, we're not just sheep-like. We're not just goat-like, according to Jesus, but what we are like and what we are are sheep goats. Within each of us is this ability to follow leaders, to get scared easily sometimes, to be playful, to wander off, and it's not like when Jesus said, some of us will be the people who all the time take care of the needy in that entire list we have in the gospel, and there will be others of us who none of the time take care of the needy. I think that's pretty much the case. There may be exceptions to that. Most of us struggle to follow Jesus. There are some things we do easily and some things we don't do easily. And so it's all about the journey of trying to follow Jesus. I can tell you times I, I in the city, you know, and you know, not 25 years ago, the last time I lived in the city, but now I visit and I'm 25 years older, I have gray hair, I'm not as strong as I used to be. If I get accosted by a homeless person who just wants money, I am less, I'm worried about taking out my wallet these days because as much as I want to give something, I'm scared, sheep-like, right? I wasn't 25 years ago. Some might say, that's a little wiser at my stage of life. And others might say, well, what is God calling you to do? What I prefer to do these days is bring someone into a, a coffee house and just get them something, which feels much safer to me now, which I never thought about. So that leads me to St. Andrew. We know very little about him. But what we know, do know about him is he was the first called with St. Peter. And here's the quote from Matthew. As Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was now called Peter, and his brother Andrew, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. He said to them, come after me, and I will make you fishers of people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Now, we in the Western world know about Peter and we know that you know Simon who became the first pope the first leader and we hear a lot of stories about him but there are numbers of stories about Saint Andrew also in the scripture not as much as Peter and in Saint the Gospel of John um, it says that Aunt, Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. Does that mean Peter was or not? We don't know. 
When Jesus walked by one day, John said, Behold the Lamb of God. Andrew and another disciple followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. We think the other disciple is Peter, because we know that from the, but, Another time when it became no, for the multiplication of loaves and fishes, it was Andrew who spoke to the little boy. Now, how many people remember that from the story? We remember the miracle, but we don't tend to remember that was Aunt St. Andrew. But let me tell you, the Orthodox churches have held St. Andrew up from the very beginning they call him um, protoletos in Greek, of course, at the time in Greek, first called. There are, in the early church, people who have written, some of the early church fathers, saying that he went out to the area around the current, what's called the Black Sea today, that far. He is a patron saint of Ukraine, Romania, and Russia, because they really believed they, that he brought the gospel to them. Now, many people will know that St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland, um, which is how uh, the Western world knows him. And so how do I tie this in together? We know so little about St. Andrew, but, you know, we don't hear about him like St. Peter, who denied Christ three times, right? And yet St. Peter, we know Peter is presented as this vulnerable per, you know, person who makes mistakes in the Gospels. And we don't hear that about St. Peter, St. Andrew, but I bet, I bet because he is a human being, he made them too. I think he, like St. Peter, like all of us, as we either continue on our journey with Christ, need to pay attention to what was read today from Ephesians. And this is the almost the, sec the beginning of the letter to the Ephesians by St. Paul. And St. Paul is writing to the people of Ephesus, which is in Turkey. And after he's visited them and gone away somewhere, and he's now telling, he, he, what he's telling these maybe nascent Christians, beginning their journey, it's probably months later, years later, we don't know. But he, this is what he writes to them, and I think this is advice for all of us. We sheep goats who sometimes are the first to follow and sometimes are not so the first. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom. Don't we all want that? A spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may know what is the hope to which he has called you what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints again the people in the early gospels at the time used the word saint to mean follower of Jesus. And so let us pray for, like St. Paul prayed for the early Christians in Ephesus, that spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we too can continue to get to know Jesus that our, eye, that our hearts, the eye of our hearts can be enlightened also so that we, the sheep goats, 
can be more sheep-like and follow Jesus perfectly as much as possible in this day and age. Amen. And joining me now, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the true and living God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. To the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The praise of the people adapted from a litany of thanksgiving from the Book of Common Prayer. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator, for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, O oh God, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, O oh God, for our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. We thank you, O oh God, for minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. We thank you, O oh God for health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, O oh God. For the brave and, and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, O oh God. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, O oh God. For all who worship here today, whose prayers and love unite us and help us follow you. We thank you, O oh God. For those who go forth from this place to make a difference in the community and beyond for peace, justice, and hope. For the communion of saints in all times and places. Oh God. We thank you as we bring specific concerns for ourselves, 
those we love, those who suffer, and those who have died, praying for our own needs and those of others. For Miss Pat, who was in hospital and now is in acute care rehab. Tim, Lori, Allison and Lisa, Saul, Nancy and their families, Linda, Blair, Elaine, Phil, Bishop Michael Curry, Matthew, Conrad, Val, Winston, Trudy, Mary. We pray for those who are traveling this week. Anyone traveling this week? And uh, Jarek is coming back from Guyana tomorrow. Uh, okay, and Elizabeth is praying for a daughter who's returning um, to Pennsylvania tomorrow because of Thanksgiving. And for everyone else in this congregation who may not be here and may be traveling to go home, coming home, um, let us all pray for them. Oh God, whose glory fills the Keep whole creation, and whose yes, presence we find Jesus. wherever we go. Preserve okay. those who travel, yes. in particular all these gathered here, and those who travel with them. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you, oh you God. God. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We, we pray for the committees of the month, which are worship, lay readers, and Eucharistic ministers. We pray this month of November, which is Men's Health Awareness Month and National Diabetes Month. We pray for those celebrating birthdays. Any birthdays? And Paula, when's your birthday? Okay. Um, it was a few weeks ago, and so we have Paula's birthday. And yours, Maisie? Oh, a big one. Her daughter turns 30 on Wednesday. And yes? And Olu turned 60 yesterday. Another big one. <laughs> okay, let us pray for everyone. I lay my pants upon you. Forgive me. Don't you think? Serve God and let us pray. And pray the prayer in the bulletin for the rest of you. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Um, anniversaries. Anyone celebrating an anniversary today? 
All right. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. To God be given all praise and glory. Along with the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look, look upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied the goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We have repented of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and, and the, the evil, evil done, done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only in your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
evening. Just the quick announcement for now about receiving communion. There are three ways to receive communion. One is just getting the host. Just put your ha hands out flat and I will drop it in. Again, we're trying, attempting contactless um, communion. If you want to receive wine, there are two ways to receive it. On your left will be a chalice being held um, that if you want the host dipped in, just point to it or put your hands like this in front of me and I will dip it in and then, and then drop it into your hand. And then if you want to drink the chalice, that will be on your right, right? And you can just drink the chalice as was done, as most of us done before then. So thank you and welcome to those who come on Thanksgiving weekend. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself to us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, most holy God, for you made all the heavens and the earth. You made us and made the world we inhabit. And you made the eternal home in which, through Christ, we have a place and to inhabit. We thank you for our creation, our very lives, and for all the blessings of this life. And especially for the fullness of life found through your Son, Jesus our Lord. We praise you, O God, whom eternity cannot contain, for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus. We praise you for his life, which informs our living, for his compassion, which changes our hearts, for his clear speaking, which contradicts our harmless generalities, for his disturbing presence, his innocent suffering, his fearless dying, his rising to life, breathing forgiveness, and restoring us forever to you. For these gifts we praise and worship you. All that is spectacular, all that is plain have their origin in you. All that is lovely, all, that, all who are loving, point to you as their fulfillment. Therefore, we gladly join our voices to the song of the church on earth and in heaven. Jesus was always the guest. In the homes of Peter and Jairus, Martha and Mary, Joanna and Susanna, he was always the guest. At the meal tables of the wealthy, where he pled the case of the poor, he was always the guest. Upsetting polite company, befriending isolated people, welcoming the stranger. He was always the guest, but here at this table, he is the host. Those who wish to serve him must first be served by him. Those who want to follow him must first be fed by him. For this is the table where God intends us to be nourished. This is the time when Christ can make us new. So come. You who hunger and thirst for a deeper, deeper faith, for a better life, for a fairer world. Jesus Christ, who has sat at our tables, now invites us to be guests at his. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he cup, took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my barod, shed for you and for 
for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this wine, the produce of the earth and the fruit of human labor. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We ask, merciful God, that you send in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and wine and fill them with the fullness of Jesus. Let that same Spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The grapes of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ, the bread of heaven. 
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 bread of heaven. drink any of it more. So. Well, we'll.
Let us pray together. Living God, in this sacrament, we have shared in your eternal kingdom. May we who taste this mystery forever serve you in faith, hope, and love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory, Glory to, to God, God whose power working in us in infinitely and more and than we can ask and imagine. May the light of God surround you, the love of God enfold you, the power of God protect you, the presence of God watch over you, and the blessing of the one holy and triune God be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. So if you're a visitor um, or new to the parish, we welcome you. Um, you can speak to the welcomer of the week, and I don't know who that person is, and you can raise your hand if, that, if you're here. There's other welcomers here. Also, you can speak to Sandra, who's the head usher and standing in the back of the church. And they can insist you in any way, and if you want to introduce yourself, that's fine. So uh, lots of stuff going on right now. Um, in the back of the church that Sandra may have, for those of you that we're in nominating season for the vestry and for junior warden. Um, and so if you would like to run, Sandra in the back has a nominating form. Otherwise, they are on the website and there is a Google document that I think a link was sent out. I don't have that in front of me. Um, just so you know, there's a reason we're not asking for convention delegates this year. Generally speaking, our annual meeting is late January, early February. And the election, and last year we had the meeting in February. So in February 20th, 23, we voted in one convention delegate and one alternate to serve at the 2024 election. The Diocese of Newark has moved when the diocesan convention is. It used to be in February, and so people would go um, to, excuse me, the end of January, very beginning of February, would go right before our annual meeting. From now on, and that year now is 2024, the 2024 convention is in November and will be from now on, which means our election that we had last February will still hold because we elected people for the 2024 convention. So if you have any questions about that, just talk to me. So I just wanna say um, there are openings for vestry and for junior warden, as I said, um, and this is the time of the year where uh, it's 
almost Christmas time, or at least Advent for us, in which we, yes? Yes? Yes, I know that. Okay. Okay, diocesan. I usually just read what's in here, and you're next after this, just so you know. Diocesan prison ministry gift and toy drive that we participate in um, every year. And it's, if you can, bring toys and gifts to SAC no later than next Sunday, which is December 3rd. And then we deliver them to Grace Church. Next, if you want to speak, or I can do another one. And so are you going to speak? Or Eva, who is? Oh, OK. Ulu, OK. I forgot that the actual, now I know what you're talking about that I forgot, so thank you. <laughs> Stewardship talk. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, this is my first time here, so I'm going to try my best to do what I have to do, and um, that is to talk about stewardship. Um, a couple of years back, um, I'm still trying to pull that year um, from my mind. Um, we came for a wedding in this church. I have always been passing by the church on my way to Livingston Mall, you know, all the time. We live in Maplewood. And I would look up the church and I would say, oh, that's a nice, beautiful church. And eventually, um, I got an invitation to come for the wedding. And I, was, I had the opportunity to come into the church and worship you know, with the saints that were here. Um, prior to then, I've been a Christian all my life, born in the church, raised. And um, incidentally, the first church I got to know, apart from the one my parents took me to, was the um, Episcopal church that we call Anglican Church in Nigeria. Uh, my elementary school was um, an Anglican church. And I say this to just mention and how it's related to me coming here. And um, eventually after many years after that wedding, I had the opportunity to finally come into the church because it's always been in my heart to worship here, but it took many years. And I'm saying all this story to show how God will put something in your heart and it takes a while for it to germinate and it prepares you. So I'm here today before you all to talk about stewardship. And um, stewardship, like um, last week, I believe Dale mentioned treasure, talent, time. And it got me thinking that is what is required of us to serve the Lord, to use our treasure to use our talent and to use our time. And I looked at the, um, the church logo, St. Andrew's Church, he mentioned being growing faith and also being a part of the community. And all my life, I've always believed in local the local church. The local church must be very effective, must be able to reach the community that it serves or it's located in. And I see St. Andrew's Church really positioned to do that and i know they've been doing it for years and when it comes to us who are here today including my humble self coming here for the first time is to use our treasure to use our talent and to use our time the church is where everybody is you know binded together and we all remember 9 11 we all remember other times when the community needed places to go for a place of soccer where they can process whatever we are going through together as a community. So the church is very important just as our, our Lord Jesus Christ has laid it on our hand and showed us that that is where we can really pull everybody together, heal regardless of our background. And I believe St. Andrew Church is doing that. So I'm saying all this to say, time is required of us, talent is required of us, and our treasure is required of us to keep it going. I know this is very popular here as, as an immigrant. I know about the power of keeping it going or keep, keeping it forward. You know, I'm still trying to get used to that. But that's what it means, and that's what Christ is calling us to do. 
and that's what stewardship is all about. I pray that God will give us the power of um, St. Andrews as a disciple of Christ, and how he went on and he became fishers of men. And I think that is the time we are now to use our talent, to use our time, to use our treasure, to continue to be fishers of men for the congregation and disciples of Christ to continue to grow. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We have very little wall space, and we're looking for a place to put the barometer of where we are. We've so far received about a little over $70,000 in commitments for next year, which is marvelous. Thank you. Thank everybody who signed a commitment, and thank all of you who are still praying about how much you can comfortably commit for 2024. It would be really wonderful if all the commitments could be in by December 10th, because then the budget committee, the finance committee rather, starts to do their work to budget. We traditionally are a congregation of people who wait till the very end of December, beginning of January to make pledges. It's really not an efficient way to budget, and it puts a tremendous burden on the finance committee and the vestry. Again, thank you very much. We're searching for a place to put this wonderful barometer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so in addition to diocesan prison ministry gifts, if you can do that, um, we have um, the greening of the church which is on Sunday, December 17th this year. This year, Christmas is on a s Monday, which means our Christmas Eve service uh, will be on December 24th in the evening of the fourth Sunday of Advent. And so we're going to green the church the week before. Stay if you can. It, if you haven't been here before for this, this church looks gorgeous and many hands make light work. Um, including any of our youth and any of our children who can help put decorations up. Um, and we are also looking for, because this is the time of the year, we have a Christmas wreath sale, not only to raise a little money because we put wreaths on every single door of this church. And if you've ever walked around, there are a lot of them. Um, and but if you put, like to put a wreath on your door at home, this is a way to raise money. We're also, so, um, because we need a lot to get delivery, we're going to have, um, not get, uh, be able to sell at cost to some of the other churches in the local area that can get um, uh, the wreaths at cost so they can decorate their churches. So that is, it's $30 for an 18-inch wreath hung on a 12-inch ring. There's a Google form. There's a link in your bulletin. Of course, you can't click on your link on the paper, but you can click on the link on the bulletin you download. Don't download. Um, or you can just donate money for that. Um, pickup is this coming week. And next, Christmas flower donations this, the, the, to green the church means there will be poinsettias and lots of them all around and so if you can help donate for them and it could be the money can be given as a tribute for people um, you love there again link is in the bulletin or there are forms in the back for that and if you're a newcomer we're ha we try to have two newcomer teas during the year and this coming one is on saturday December, and I'm trying to find, December 2nd, which is next Saturday at 3 o'clock. It'll be downstairs in the ladies' um, parlor, um, adjacent to the parish hall in which we have coffee hour. And this is where, especially if you're new, you can find something more out about SAC, ask any of the questions. We can talk about any ministries or anything else. And so there's tea and some 
nice snacks. I can't tell you what they are right now. And if you do lifeline screening, there's uh, December 8th is coming up and the rest of the normal uh, announcements. And so it didn't get into the bulletin as a regular announcement, but it's in the calendar that's on here. Nathan Darrow, who is a choir member, but he's also a professional actor, and he is going to give two performances in this church building um, on December 15th and 16th at 7 p.m. And what he's doing is giving a performance of The Godfather in 40 minutes. It's obviously, it is not the entire play, uh, movie, um, but he is very, very good. And he's going to be asking for free will donations. It's going to be open to the public. He's got, um, they publicized to all his contacts also. And this is, we're not gonna make a million dollars through this, but it's a way to support Nathan, to support the church, and maybe have some fun also. So I just wanted to let you know about that because I didn't see that announcement in here. I think that's it. No, it's not it. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, some of you may remember uh, we prayed for uh, my younger brother's uh, daughter-in-law that she had uh, a baby with spina bifida and um, through the miracle of modern medicine, uh, Ashley, their mother, uh, was able to have an in utero surgery and bind the spine, close the spine up. And uh, she was born a year and a half ago. She's the youngest of all the grandchildren. And she's been to doctors, and it's amazing what the, Cle uh, the Cincinnati University Hospital can do with spina bifida kids. Uh, she is standing up on her own. She's in the 90th percentile for spina bifida kids. And um, I'm coming to you for additional prayers. She, this Friday, the first, she's going to have her first surgery since that one in utero. Uh, she's, it's, uh, complicated and I can tell you more about it if you're interested, but she is having the uppermost spine, spinal uh, bone removed and that should allow more flow between the fluids of her brain and along the spinal cord. So I just ask that you all pray for Stella Wren Kinsey and the mother is Ashley, uh, father is Jim, not Jim, sorry, Will. <laughs> My brother's name is Jim. And Silas is their older, older child. So I just thank you for, I know that this church is so good at prayers. And I just thank you for, in advance, for your prayers for Stella and a successful outcome. Thank you. Absolutely. And yes? Go ahead. Good, uh, good morning, church. I, uh, as you know, Advent is coming. Next Sunday is Advent 1. Uh, my schedule allows me I should be here next Saturday to start preparing stuff for the church for Advent. I hope we'll have wreaths by then because all the doors need wreaths, blue bows, I'll get the Advent wreath, which hangs here. I'll read that ready next Saturday. Um, that's, like, that's, that's the biggest stuff, really. I can do most everything myself, but uh, it would help if there's something else to be here, too, to sort of give a hand. Next Saturday, then, hopefully, around noontime, I should be here and do what I can if I have some help. I'd appreciate that very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. And now, let us close with music. Thank you. 
Today's service has ended, but our service in the world continues. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks.